Hey guys, I was told I talk too much and I'm way too slow. Oh well. I'll try to speed it up a little bit. See if you guys can keep up. So, D-Day. I did a bunch of flows. Okay, see if I can figure out what I did because I was too tired to actually do a video that day. What the basic experiment was, was to con continue on what, with what my anti-reversion stuff would do. And let's see if we can figure it out piece by piece, okay? So we had the bare head here, and I had a 12 volt four fitted with some clay. And I did the swirl because Stan said, hey, you forgot the swirl. Well, he's right. I did forget the swirl. Okay. Then we take the same thing, and we reverse the bench and see whether the, the port is more efficient forward or reverse. Okay. It went 268 and change with that on there and it it did considerably less 244 and change reverse flow okay this looks like the same test don't ask me why it's different I don't know that's why I have to do I have to do uh, do it as I go which was why the other one was so boring okay this one here I take 1206 and I make it fit. It actually went up a little bit more. It's a bigger radius, okay? And if you pay attention to how it works, you can compare this directly to this right here. Okay, that's where I went down a touch. Now, what I actually did is I wound up, I lined up this wall and this wall and then filled this side. So it had a bigger radius going into our push rod wall, and it seemed to have liked that. Okay, here, I did a 1206 with the clay, and then I put a 1204 outside of it. Okay, stacked one radius on top of the other radius. Now I have a relatively small radius going to a, a radius that's fitted to the port. So, in reality, they're almost identical. Hardly any loss. Okay? This swirl went up a touch. Now, I take that exact same setup, reverse the flow. With the, the two stacked radiuses, notice my reverse flow went down quite a bit. Now, this isn't, isn't exactly test per test, because this only had one spacer. This has got two spacers. But... Notice how much our reverse flow went down. We're looking to redu reduce reverse flow and have our forward flow as, in, as efficient as possible. Okay, and then I took everything off. I did the, the head just by itself. Reverse flow, 237. Now, take a look at that versus this. Okay, if you add a radius to the end of the port, it goes up, kind of like putting a pipe on an exhaust flow, right? Same idea. Even though it's a radius, it wouldn't be as efficient. Now, later on in this mess, I did the same thing with the base, and I put, I put my tube on my TPI base going the wrong way. And guess what it did? Very interesting stuff. At least it is for me. I know other guys say I'm too boring. Oh, well. All right, where was I? Okay, see if I didn't goof this up. Now, this one's 245.6. It's 12.04 with the radius out. Okay, so the radius, so it's coming out the intake port, and then it radiuses out, so it expands. Okay, that's reverse flow. It likes that. Notice how it picked up quite a bit. Okay, this is 246.1. Right up a little bit more, 12.04, radius out. And then I put a 1206 on top of it. Right, reverse flow. So it's got two radiuses. And it went up. Why do I have a feeling this is radius out? I think that's wrong. I think it's radius in. Sorry, guys. Impossible for me to know. All right, 239.6 TPI base, reverse flow, no clay, 
239.6. It actually goes up over the plane head. So that's something interesting, right? Then I take the TPI base and I put a clay radius forward. Okay, so we get 260 through the base, through the head. The head flows 270 round. Okay. Now we take that exact setup and we reverse it. It goes to 242, which is more than didn't have the radius. That makes sense to me. Okay. Now I take take the radius off and I put my piece of pipe on it. It goes up even more. It makes it more efficient. Okay, 230.4 TPI base with number eight runner, no radius, reverse. Okay, so I put the Arizona Speed Marine runner on. We drop all the way from 260 to 230. Ouch. Not much I can do with that. those runners. I did what I thought I could do, and it really didn't help that much. Okay. Okay, now I have a bunch of quotes here, right? 233.4. I put an, a radius on the end of my Arizona Speed Marine. It went up a few. And then I take the TPIS base, number eight radius. Uh, see, this has no radius. I add a radius to it, so we get 249. That's through, it's across the radius, through Arizona Speed Marine, through the TPI, through the cylinder head, 249. Okay, so assemble everything all together. We're right at 227.5. That's at number eight. The garage was insanely hot by that point. Let's just do a, a quickie here. Now, what we're talking about is, like, we have this set up on the bench, right? We have it set at 600 lift. All of those were at 600 lift. And if we get a number, if it run them just like this, and then we get a number where we put a straight pipe across it, that straight pipe adds flow to, it, to us, okay? I'm sure there's plenty of fluid dynamicists that can explain it. I'm, I wish I was smart enough to, be, to explain it. I can't. You guys could certainly help me along, because I, I need to know. I need to learn plenty. Uh, somebody sent me good videos of uh, fluid dynamics from the 60s. I've seen them before, but they're they're great to rewatch. Uh, I don't know if I can. I wonder if they can be tagged onto this. I don't know. Interesting idea, though. But that would be great, guys. If you if you know of good videos that can be tagged on and help explain what's going on, that would be great. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I really like the anti-reversion stuff. And if it's done right, it actually increases our flow through a set port. Okay? Whether it's on the intake or the exhaust, it's going to increase flow. Now, this is nothing new to me. I did this in the 90s on the Chevelle. And uh, I did it on the intake. I did it from the, from the front fuel injection to the intake manifold, intake manifold to the head, from the head to the exhaust manifold, and from the exhaust collector, I made an extended collector that went into my oversized exhaust pipe. My exhaust pipe is three and a half, my collector is three inch, and it interfaces about three inches in, I think. I built that a long time ago. By the way, it worked out great as far as I'm concerned. It, it, to me, it felt like the engine didn't even know there was an exhaust system on there. It ran just as good open headers as it did with, with a full three and a half inch with an, a, with an H pipe. In any case, sorry I talked too much, guys. These, I think I'm going to do some final touch-up on, uh, on these. I do have to... I gotta get that block on on the the stand. Not looking forward to lifting that. You know, I used to be able to lift big blocks on the stand by myself. I'm old now. I don't know if I can do that anymore. In any case, I should probably get something done today. Uh, thanks for hanging out, guys.
Have a good night.